everybody, welcome back to the Skills Make You Mills series. I'm with Brother Ollie Brady, who I've met once at the uh, Black Wealth Renaissance um, Bosses Brunch, and we've, we've had multiple uh, podcasts together. So Ali owns a cleaning service that he started this year, and we're going to dive into his journey in starting that cleaning service and, and, and the, the ups and downs and, and the goals that he has. So Ali, man, how you doing, man? Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Man, I'm doing good, man. First off, my brother, I appreciate you, Roy, for bringing me on, man. You know, like I say, uh, I say this all the time, man. It's about getting in the room, you know, get the opportunity just to get introduced to people. You never know who you're going to meet. And like you mentioned, met you at the Boston Brunch event. You know, we've been rocking over since, man. I've had you on my podcast a couple of times. So I definitely appreciate you, know, for just reaching out and extending the chance to, you know, provide your audience with some value. So for one, thank you to you, sir. Appreciate you. Absolutely, man. I think, thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. Um, so, so tell us, man, how did you get into the cleaning business? Did you make a pivot from another business? Yeah, it was, it's crazy, man. I'm, I'm one of the people, uh, I guess you want to call it a serial entrepreneur. I had to calm down. Um, shout out to Andre Hatchett because, I mean, it took talking to him to realize, you know, you can't really just do too many things at once. You know, you have to get good at one thing first before you can start branching out and expanding. And originally, I mean, I was, what, talk about 2021 was a wild year for me. I was doing trading options, Turo. I was doing credit repair. I was doing a whole bunch of stuff, podcasting, things like that, along with my day job. And uh, I kind of, I wasn't really, like, credit repair, I was tired of chasing people down for money. Turo, it was cool for what it was, but to scale Turo, you have to get into a lot of overhead. See, there's two ways you're going to scale that. It's overhead or partnerships. Hmm. And that just takes a lot of time. I'm not saying it's not possible to do because I know people that do it well and are successful at it. Uh, podcast, you know, that's just something I've, I started just a hobby of mine. I don't monetize or anything like that. But um, what happened was, as far as the cleaning business goes, I was doing Turo. was actually doing really well on Turo, but I only had my one vehicle. At this time, I was still working my nine to five, so I was still driving to and from work. And I found a way to arbitrage it, which basically I found a way to make still make a profit off of, you know, renting my car out and maybe renting a super cheap car for somebody, making a deal with them. So I can get around, get to work and stuff. And I pocket the difference. And I mean, that afforded me enough to where I wasn't, I didn't have to pay my car note or uh, insurance. And I was still making a little bit here and there. Like my first month, I made a video on it like my first month, did over like, did like 1400 or so. And I mean, if you time it up right, doing deliveries and stuff to the airports, things like that. I, mo I actually moved to where I'm at now for that business because uh, of that position me in between both the airports and was way closer. So cut my expenses. But what I realized was, for one, the used car market was going up crazy. So you were going to have to start spending more money to get the same type of cars. Two, I just, I'm not a, I'm not a fan. I mean, I'm operations management. That's kind of like my niche for like work. Um, and I wasn't a fan of all the overhead. It, it was real. I'm not going to say it was impossible to be efficient, but I wasn't a fan of it. So I knew about, shout out to the Heart Zogs. If y'all don't know who they are, y'all tap in with them because that's who I learned from. The Heart Tremoni, uh, Anthony and Janoka. Shout out to them. Uh, I had bought a course from them and I only bought it because it was super cheap. I was like, you know what? I want to buy this because I knew eventually because I had talked to them a couple of times, uh, meeting them in person and stuff and they had mentioned it was going to raise the price. So I was like, man, let me just cop this. Originally, I was planning on working on it with my boy. They don't work out. I suggest people like, if you want to do something, just do it. Just do it. Don't really wait on nobody else because a lot of times your, your plans on the line with somebody else's. Mm -hmm. That timing is everything with this. And for me, it was perfect timing because like I was mentioning to y'all with Turo, the used car market was going crazy. I had uh, recently just sold a truck to make money that I was upside down. So that's when I knew it was like, okay, this is crazy. So fast forward, end of the year, like January, actually like early edition, like January, um, like December, January time, somewhere in there. I got, uh, I started looking at what they was going to give me for my Jeep. I was like, let me just see what they offering. Cause I looked before it was like a two, $3,000 profit. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And I remember I was like, all right, that's, you know, I'm going to just hold off. I kept doing Turo. Uh, I was kind of doing it though. I was just, I was roughing it. I was doing everything myself. And then like, I remember I just happened to check right when I was about to leave my nine to five and get an IA um they was offering me like six thousand in profit so man i, I was just like all right man turn that down. run it yeah yeah it was, it was kind of one of those things like exactly like it's too much they offering 
Like, I don't know if this is going to come around again. And truly, it didn't because I caught him at the perfect time because, like, the next week, the profit had dropped down like four. Hmm. So when I sold it, I had maximized what I could possibly get. And uh, I took 5000 of that. And I was already going through the cleaning course anyways because I had a plan on pivoting into that anyway just because it's minimal overhead. And that's what that's the biggest thing that drew me to that. Um, so I took five, th- I took a thousand for myself to just do whatever with, I took 5,000, I put it in, a, I opened up, I uh, started the business, you know, uh, started my cleaning company, uh, started in January. That's when I kind of got rolling, uh, got everything situated. So yeah, got started around January as far as business formation, everything like that. So what, uh, what was, what was in the course by the heart Zogs, um, that you think cut the time needed to launch your cleaning business so i would be real with you at the time when i was getting everything situated i was still working and stuff still doing turo and i still was able to get up and going and get situated within about four weeks um give or take it also takes a minute to set up uh google yeah uh, google I, they they got to send stuff in the mail for you to verify on local yep. services stuff like that which is where i'm at mainly that's all i use and uh, that was a mix up. So I from, turned from two weeks into like four to get that. So it was like another two week turnaround. At the time, uh, I was only on Yelp. So I mean, if you really on your stuff and like you're not really, you don't have much, much going on, or if you're not doing a whole lot like I am, I'd say the biggest weight is going to be how long it takes for them to get your uh, business, you know, get the formation. Google my business. Yeah. Cause that, so, takes, that, yeah. Takes, that takes time. Well, that and just forming the LLC. Yeah. So, I mean, mine, I got mine back relatively quickly. It was uh, maybe two, three weeks. Um, at that point, it's just a matter of trying to get everything else situated. But what I do like about the Hartzog's uh, course, uh, Cleaning Business University, I mean, they also sell, like, they also have a community on the side you can purchase as well, which I did, just because I wanted to be around some like-minded people that, you know, doing the same thing I'm doing, because we can feed off each other. And I can break down how that actually really helped me out uh, when I hit a real rough spot in the business later yeah. on. Um, but... For me, they give you a step-by-step booklet, per se, of how to get this going from A to Z, start to finish from business formation, cleaning interviews, uh, you know, hiring, marketing. If you want to go in the SEO, they got the SEO for you. They also have the cleaning, that community I told you about as well. So to me, it was like, all you have to do is be able to comprehend. I mean, it's nothing. You're just watching videos. They're providing you also not only with the videos explaining what's going on, but they're giving you resources, right? So they might give you some homework for, you know, like, you know, competitive research, things like that. I mean, I'm not going to go too deep into it, you know, this day stuff, but they give you all the, con- they give you the contracts you need for the cleaners, which, as you know, it costs money. You got to, they hire, you know, that's, stuff that they did out of their own pocket, you know, getting a lawyer to draft up contractor agreement and stuff like that for them. And you just get that as part of the course. So, I mean, really and truly that information alone, plus, you know, the job scripts and everything like that, the job, they give you like a, a hiring script and all that for your job postings. A couple of the documents in there you get along to me is worth the price of the course. I mean, I don't know what the course is now. I don't know the price. I, I think it's like 300, probably. 397 or something like that. But I mean, I think it's higher than that now because oh, I actually okay. got an affiliate sale from that. And I know that's uh, how much I made off. Like, oh, woo, geez. Okay. So, My first so, affiliate sale. So, so the question yeah. is, you know, you took, you took four or $5,000 from the sale of your Jeep. Did you need four or $5,000? Did you need to buy cleaning materials? Did you need to hire a W 2 employee and all that stuff? Okay. Or did you Most need to have that 5000 to start? So it's crazy, right? Because I, I I mention online on Twitter a lot, like, oh, you know, I've cleared three thousand revenue or whatever, and yeah, I don't clean any houses. I don't see these houses. I have met two of my cleaners. I don't even meet my cleaners. I put them on uh, what we call test cleans, uh, which is usually like for me how I do it is uh, this is a one-off jobs where it's not like a recurring clean or something like that. I'll give them a one-off job, see the feedback on that based on how I have my setup and everything for my platform. We do get feedback from customers and I'll try to get that. I mean, you'll know if it's a bad job because you'll hear about it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, typically that's that's my process. I mean, I'm I'm not as strict as the hard law as far as hiring goes because I'm in Dallas. Um, it's already com- super competitive. So I kind of just try to, I've tried to tweak things to what works for me per se, being super new. And being like, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, I haven't established myself as like a dominant figure yet. I mean, that's yet though. Like for me, that's where I'm headed. Uh, And like I say, marketing had its own challenges as well. But as far as 
do you need 5,000 to start? I personally don't think you do. Really and truly, you could probably get started between like the booking platform I have. I, have, I pay somebody monthly for the website, but you don't have to do that, right? Mm -hmm. I do that. I choose to do that. I'll say probably like 1,000, 1,500, maybe. Um, it depends on what state you're in, forming the business also. Like out here in Texas, you know, it's like 300, I think $30 to get the business started. I post a job ass on all free platforms except for Craigslist. So Craigslist only costs like $45 a posting for 30 days. Uh, outside of that, all your money is based on how much you're going to put in the marketing, which is your bread and butter, how you're going to generate business for the, uh, like people wondering like, how am I going to get customers? How am I going to find people? Like, don't worry about that. You're going to get calls. It's just how much are you willing to put in? What's your budget for marketing? Yeah. And for me, I knew I wanted, before I even got started with this, I knew I wanted to get into SEO as well. So I was like, I spoke to a couple of people that have clean business. Like if y'all know Alex, you know, he killing it in his. And a couple other people, you know, hard as I've talked to them about what they put in the market and stuff like that. And it just made sense to have a, like a reserve set up. So I haven't started my SEO process yet, but I did find somebody that's way cheaper than what they are. And uh, one of my friends who I met from the cleaning business uh, community, she put me on to, he's super uh, cheap in terms of SEO pricing. So I'll probably get started with that, if not next month, August, because uh, I'm also planning to uh, branch out into Houston as well. Uh, Got gotcha. you. Well, for the folks that may not know, what is what is SEO? What does that mean? Uh, it's like search engine, search engine optimization. Um, basically, from what I know, I don't know too much about it. I'm no expert at it, but I, you know, showing up on the first page of Google, things like that. When people search up cleaning business, you want you want you know, like, it's like when people think of you, right? When they when they hear Royal, who do they think of? I think of DNA the DNA paternity testing business. That's what I'm thinking of. So like when people search a cleaning business, you want you want your name to pop up first. You want that to be the first thing that shows up, like your business. Because, you know, if you're on that first page, typically y'all know how it goes. We go on Google, oh, okay, I need somebody to come clean my home. If it's not on that first page, we're not about to scroll, you know, three, four, five pages deep in mm -hmm. or something. We're going to pick something on that first page. So that's why you want to have this, uh, you know, this included in your business thoughts and things like that and all the plans you got far as uh you know marketing things of that nature uh, yeah. as far as i know i am no expert on it uh like i say i outsource i'm gonna hire somebody to do that for me yeah i, I know I, a I general hired, amount of stuff about it i hired somebody out of um south africa to do my seo they they have a pretty good rate and i'm i would recommend them to you however i need to see the results specifically for mine uh to, to no i got you but uh no no nah, that's that's key yeah 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 like i he hit me up i hired him i paid x amount like i paid him like six hundred and fifty dollars to to start and start doing everything and then he hits me up and he's like hey bro how's it going uh, all right i got 13 blogs written for you i got your keyword stuff optimized we're gonna da, 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 da. we're gonna work on this for the next uh eight weeks and then after that we'll monthly we will you know work on your stuff and because i i agree you, you you it's the same comparison to the, to the dna testing world it doesn't take that much money to start similarities is it's the llc um, Google My Business is free, essentially. Um, and then your marketing is, is going to cost you the most money to like, depending on how, how what do you want? Do you want to only make a thousand dollars a month in revenue? Exactly. And, and 300 bucks a month in profit or something like that? Like, what do you want? If you want to supercharge that, you yeah. got to have marketing ads, SEO. That's just, that's the name of the game. You know what I mean? It's crazy you mentioned that, right? Like, I tell people it's kind of like a faucet, right? The more you put in, the more you're going to get out. Yeah, I know that's not, I know people don't like, like I started off, I don't even use my Google, my business really. I mean, yeah, I have a profile and everything, but my main focus is local serve Google local services. That's like my main. I'm so, by the way, I am incredibly jealous of you all being able to use Google. Oh yeah, you can't use it, huh? Because there is no, pater there is no, there is no category yeah. of paternity testing on that. Oh uh, yeah, see that's, so originally like a lot of people will think, so like, don't get me wrong. Yelp may work for some people. It just didn't work for me. Yeah. But, don't, but then I, but I speak to, you know, the heart and and they kill it on Yelp. So like everybody different. Like it took me, they tricked me because they got me into this promotion deal. So I was paying, not realizing I really wasn't saving nothing because it's still going to hit the amount you have. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I waste, I, I probably waste, I, my first month was wasted because I wasn't on any, I was on Thumbtack. Yeah. Uh, things like that where you're paying for leads, but you're not really, you really fighting with everybody, which I mean, don't get me wrong, you're fighting people on Google local services, but most of the time when you get a call, like if I get a call, right, from somebody that's seen my uh, local, uh, from my local services, 
nine times out of ten, I'm getting that booking. Like if they hit me up, I don't really get too many people that's price shopping. Most people they look in the book right now, they want some. some most of them want next day. Like I, like a lot of like the cleaners I have now. I mean, I'm fortunate right now because I have a good solid amount of cleaners. Um, when I first started this, it was it was terrible. It was a struggle. And people always wonder, like, what should I be worried about more? Should I be worried about hiring or getting jobs? And to me, and I mean, you could ask anybody you ask in this business, it's going to be always be hiring. And I mean, the hard sauce even tell you, those say that on all their lives and stuff like that. You have to always be hiring. I remember when I first started this, I had two cleaners. Uh, I had one, she was eh, decent. I had another one. She was very good, but she was extremely slow. Mm. So it it's a gift and a curse with that. Like we serve, we we have different types of cleaners. So some is like a standard or deep clean, something like that. Uh, typically, you know, standard cleans are like, you know, maintaining what's already, you know, in good shape. Yeah. But she would kind of do a deep clean for every clean. So it's not, uh, I mean, it doesn't hurt me because of the way my pricing structure is. I don't pay, I don't have W2 employees. So it doesn't really hurt me, but it affects how things work for them. Also, you have to understand we're going into people's homes. Like I don't do offices yet. I'm uh, working on that probably for next year, getting in the office, uh, cleaning and stuff like that for commercial. Yeah. But um, you have to understand when you're dealing with people in their homes, they want stuff done in a timely manner. So now yeah. that can start affecting you. Like I lost a couple, like I like I'm almost over a thousand again in revenue from my recurring, but I lost a lot of business off of that because she was like, you know, recurring business because it's just taking too long. And I usually typically only send one cleaner out. Uh, some of my cleaners may have a partner that may help them out. And I was fortunate enough uh, to find a cleaner who has like a whole setup going. You know what? So I got, a, I I got a question. I, I don't mean to interrupt you. So mm -hmm. I got a question though. What, what this business model works? So uh, the other day, and I'm pretty sure you've seen them. The other day I went to the car wash um, and they have subscription models at car washes now. You see that, right? You know, you can, oh, you can, you can pay, $39 a month and, and, you know, you can come to the car wash as much as you can. Um, would that be, would that possibly work in the cleaning world? Like a subscription model, almost they pay X amount and they can get. So I, I personally think it would, I've actually kind of mulled over that for Airbnb cleanings. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't really, cause it's so hard. So Airbnb cleans are the hardest cleaners for me to price. I don't typically even take them because it's just most of them don't want to pay anything, but they also need it. They have super high turnover, yeah. but I also need it to make sense because the way I pay my cleaners is contractors, right? So I pay them 60% of the job mm. and I keep 40. So I need to also think, keep in terms of like, okay, how many, you roughly kind of get an average after you start looking at other cleaners, uh, clean the cover stuff, how long it's going to take to do jobs. And um, after that, I, I kind of want my cleaners to at least make something that I call it like a livable wage. Like I want them to get anywhere between 25, 35 hour. So for me, it's like when I start taking in account, like, okay, how long is this going to take uh, for this price? Is it even worth it? Is yeah. anybody going to even want this job? Because I mean, at the end of the day, these are contractors I work with. They're not W-2, so they don't have to go do a job. I may, I've had people say, you know, this is a work, to, you know, between the drive you know, gas push a five dollars a gallon now. Mm -hmm. You got to keep all that in mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm not covering gas for the person that's going to do the job. Excuse me, do the job, but I have to keep in mind, like, okay, if they got to go drive 45 minutes there, 45 back, it'll take them all day to clean this home, and they're only trying to pay a hundred dollars. Is it worth? Like, it's not worth it for them, and it don't make sense for me to even take the job. So what I started doing, uh, when it's a job of that nature to entice my cleaners, like to keep them around and keep good morale and stuff with all my contractors. What I do now is I'll say, hey, do you mind if I, if I give somebody your number as a referral? So when I get those smaller jobs that come in, people contact me about like, oh, maybe I just need bathrooms clean. And you know, something that's super low priced where I'm not gonna make no money on it. So it, break, it makes no sense for me to book this. It's really just like, there's nothing gonna be made from this. It's not even gonna cover nothing. It's really almost a loss. So at that point, it's like, I'll just give that, I'll give them that number, refer them out. So now they know that I sent them some business just outside of my company, but that keeps me on their mind. So they always are okay trying to like, if I need something last minute, I can hit them up and use it. They'll be like, yeah, I'll go do it for you. I'll take care of it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of like the balance I found with that as well. 
just to kind of help out my cleaners. Because at the end of the day, the way I break it down to all my uh, contractors, this is a partnership. I'm just here to add on to what you already got going on. I don't care if they work with 10 other companies as contractors. It don't matter to me as long as you can take care of what I, what I got you scheduled for. It's all good. So that's kind of how I, I entice a lot of my cleaners to, uh, you know, work for me. So um, that leads into, into a comment, a statement, and then a question is that as a DNA agency owner, I'm constantly, there, there are no repeat clients, you know, in the cleaning, in the cleaning world, in the lawn care world, in those types of service businesses world, you have repeat clients because, you know, if you do well enough. Uh, so how many of your clients so far have been repeat clients? Um, and is that something that you're striving for, for your book of business to be a re repeat clients? Yeah, right now I'm pretty low. Like most of my cleans are one-time cleans. Um, typically a lot of people don't, and I mean, there may be a lot of reasons like inflation, things like that. Like yeah. I, when I first started, I finally crossed that threshold of a thousand dollars of revenue. I end up losing a couple customers. I, what really happened is I didn't even lose customers. I lost my cleaners, man. Like yeah. it was a point I went through like a three week gap, lost all my cleaners. And like, I had my first four figure day the following week. I lost, I only had two cleaners at the time. That's why I say I always be hiring. Cause you might think you're good, but you really, you yeah. never know what happened. Yeah. Medical stuff happened with both of them, lost them both. So now I still got bookings I need to get done. I got nobody to do them. And it doesn't make sense to outsource because I'm going to be losing. It's going to be costing me money. Yeah. So at this point in time, I kind of throttled down everything uh, and just went hard at trying to find different avenues to hire. But that's that's the job's going to come. And I know people probably like, I don't get a crazy amount of bookings, but I get enough to where I just crossed like this month. I just crossed 4,000. We still got two weeks to go in the month. Yeah. I'm trying to, my, my, my immediate goal was to hit 5K a month of revenue. My, what I want to do is get up to 10K a month of revenue, which is where I'm trending uh, for the first year. If everything keeps the way it's going, I'm going to hit that goal before You'll get it. within my first year. You'll get it. And I'm, I really don't have no doubt in my mind I'm going to hit it at this point because I have a good solid group of cleaners now. And that was the hard, that's the hardest part. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm still always looking to hire. Like, even yeah. if I can't give them but one job a week. I have people like that. And that's cool. Some people are okay with part-time. Like, I don't care what you, like, if you can only work one day a week, cool, come work with me. I'll make it work. I'll figure it out. I mean, I'm going to let you know up front and be transparent. I may not be able to get you, you know, the amount of like 10 book, like, you know, three bookings this day maybe, but I can work with that. Yeah. It don't matter to me. Like, and me being able to do that, like some people don't want to work with those type of people. I don't care. Like if you do good, if you do good work, if you can get the job done, you can work with me. It don't matter to me at all. Yeah. And I mean, I'm going to treat you right. You're going to get paid every week. People like getting paid every week. And at the end of the day, I mean, you freelance. At the, you know, you ain't tied to me. You're not bound to me. But I'm just here to put extra work on your plate. That's how I ex explain to people. I'm just here to be your marketing tool. Right. Have you, have you, I know you're only, you know, five, six months into the business, but you stated earlier that you are looking to possibly get into office cleaning next year. And so with office cleaning, I'm assuming that's more contract driven, Right. And then past that, uh, mm -hmm. are you are you considering doing government contracting at least for um, the city the city of Dallas? Like, could you imagine getting some of those government contracts where you go so go clean? Yeah, uh, so I'm in a weird space right now. I'm at a point where I'm trying to figure out ways to maximize like services, and I want to even have it where I have junk hall offer a lot of different things. I want to be able to get to where I, I'm more like an Airbnb manager as well. Uh, just th these are like long-term slow things. As far as like uh, the op the commercial por portion of it, I wanted to get into that because it's more stable to me. Like right now, yeah, you may find some recurring customers, but they could drop off in you know two three months, and it may not be nothing to do with the quality of your service. It might just be because hey, we're headed towards a recession, so I, yeah. this is something I can't afford. I got to cut this out the budget. Now, when I start thinking about you know businesses, you work in B two B basically. Well, they have an allotted budget already for this set aside, so that's kind of where I want to transition myself to. And I mean, I plan on taking a couple. I, I know a couple of people I've seen courses floating around there. And I mean, just because I took the hearts off, don't get me wrong. I've taken their course that you learn a whole wealth of information from that, but it's not the end all be all for me. It's like, I still need to constantly be picking up because everybody does things differently. Like they had somebody come in there who solely works with Airbnb cleaners, but he does 1.2 mil. I think it's for like, 
I think it's double that now. But like he started off like his first good year was like over a million dollars. Now he's up to like three. And and it's like I want to go finding your niche. I want to go find other people. Like I see other people, you know, from searching on YouTube, scouring through all social media, you know, that have especially on the commercial side. Like the hard they don't do commercial. They killing it just on residential. See me, my vision for my business is is to be like I want to be like a household thing all over Texas. Like I want to be like I don't know if I plan on going everywhere nationwide and like that, but at least in Texas, I want to branch out to like all the big time major cities, and maybe maybe after we'll branch out, who knows? And then eventually I want to, but I want to sell this eventually. So I kind of want to make it to where we have a nice recurring clientele. Like, and when you mentioned the commercial cleaning, that's going to be consistent recurring work. Yeah, and like I say, they have budgets for this, so it's not like it's it's a guesswork in it. You know, it's just like this is what it is. Here's what we're gonna pay you. And I mean, most of these buildings, you don't need but one or two people. So yeah, I may have eight, nine contractors, but I can be like, I can put two different contractors on a, on a job like that because all you need is some SOPs for something like that as far yeah. as the cleaning goes. Because now you're talking about office building. People aren't as anal when it comes to the quality of a cleaning office buildings for one. I'm not saying you don't need to do a quality job, but it's, it's just a different attention to detail that mm-hmm. goes into them. Yeah. And it starts allowing me to utilize my cleaners more and get them more consistent work. Now, as far as government contracting, I have thought about that, but I don't know what that looks like for the cleaning sector. Uh, but I, I plan on when I get to that, I'm, I'm kind of taking things slow. I'm not trying to rush because sure, sure. I don't want to hire, I don't want to hire anybody else out till I hit 10 K a month. Gotcha. Like, to me, I can still handle the day to day. I don't spend a ton amount of time. Like, like I said, I don't have to clean no houses. I might spend a few hours a week, you know, working on this. And it's mainly just answering calls. Um, I do need to sit down and go through my CRM setup that I have and get that kind of done. And I mean, outside of that, the hardest part is the initial startup, figuring out your pricing after, you know, research and all that. That's gonna be the, that's gonna be the most work you put into this as far as time, cause you're trying to get going. You're trying to get off the ground at launch. Yeah. But after that, you just talk about some interviews answering phone calls that the phone call shouldn't take you talk about a long call it'd be like 10 minutes yeah and that's somebody that just needs you to break down so much detail but the way i I respond to customers that call in i try to be real personable and i have it to where i'll even send out my cleaning checklist to them because it eliminates a lot of the back and forth on the phone so it maximizes my time i don't have to be spending too much time on the phone if the, you know i offer you know I, we can send you the checklist and you can go through it and pick which clean works best for you that way and i mean like i say all my all my stuff is online so and it takes you probably talking about 60 seconds to get through a booking the longest part is probably gonna be entering your card information because you got to go find your credit card yeah i don't do no cash payments it's credit card only so i know i'm getting paid yeah. before i even get to the job that's another reason I like this business. I don't have to worry about none of the, the guesswork, anything like that. I have to chase nobody down. I put a hold on that car 24 hours before the cleaning. I know right then and there, once I go to initiate that hole, like, hey, I'm getting my money. So we good. Yeah. Uh, send a cleaner out there. They do the job, charge it after it's completed. Nine times out of 10, they either there or they're not. They do a walkthrough. So we good to go. I know it's not going to be no complaints off of this. So that's, you know, but back to my bad. I got off, off topic. No, no, that's, that's, that's the, the uh, question. Yeah, go ahead. That's the that's the thing, man. That you know, I mean, I did this since from the beginning in my business myself. About I don't mm-hmm. leave the house until I get paid, or nothing exactly. happens. Nothing happens until I get paid. We can have a conversation. We can talk about what you need, and I just say, hey, they're like, well, okay, can I just walk in the office and pay afterwards? No, I will send you an invoice exactly. Pay over the phone, um, and then once I do that, then I'll send you everything that you need to do. Like I don't know, man. I'm not getting burned like that. You know, because uh, you manage it's just a way. It's just not maximizing your time. Like right, it's not like I'll have a conversation all day. But if, until I put that until I well, for me, if I see a booking, OK, you got my attention. Now we now, you know, OK, we good. And they set up profiles and stuff on my stuff. So they good to go. They can alter the bookings. They got they can switch to recurring. They can do every, like everything is on them. I make it real simple. Like you can go out to convenience or whenever you free to go and do it. Yeah. And that, that's how it is. Once I send that booking out, hey, you can just do whatever you need to do. Everything's online. If you need to call me, you can call, you can text the number, I'll get back to you. But most people, once I send that booking, they're good and they'll just do everything online. If they need to make any changes, I'll do it online. They don't call me no more for nothing. So now I don't have to be bothered with a customer and they put their credit card information on that booking. So now we're good to go. I confirm that once I get it in, 
hey, 24 hours prior to the clean, I'm putting a hold on your card. Mm. And I know right then and there, it's either going to go through or it's going to get declined. If it gets declined, yeah. they'll get a notification via email. I'll make a phone call. Either they can or they can. I mean, I've never had no issues with this. Most people, it might be a mix of they might put the wrong card, but I've only had to happen like twice. And it still worked out. We still got the cleaners done and all that. Yeah, that's dope, man. I, I like I like how you, you're doing this. And I also like, you know, I mean, months ago before you started your cleaning business, I remember like like you said in the beginning, man, you were you were trying to do a whole bunch of you know, you know, crypto, you know, Turo, this, this, that, that, that. I like how you kind of just laser focused on one thing. And because the dope thing is that as you laser focus on one industry, you realize that there's a whole bunch of niches within that industry that you can eventually. Yeah. Yes, while. sir. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is crazy because I, I plan on, I mean, I don't, I don't really care who here because if they do it, I'm going to do it better. So I plan on kind of doing like almost like a, a, a software, like a SaaS type set setup eventually to service clean, like not just cleaning business, but all service based businesses. I want to kind of be the competitor to the, the launch 27s and stuff out here where it's almost like I had this idea for the, actually the, this idea first came to me in credit repair. And I want to, I don't want to do it until I can say like, I'm bringing in a certain amount of money in a month and which yeah. that like the golden number for me is 10 K a month. And that's when I can start looking to expand off into other things I want to do off of this. And with credit repair, it would just, that's crazy because my boy actually kind of does that with credit repair now and it's working out really well. He took my day. He just kind of ran with it. For me, I have a weird thing about me where I want to be like an authority figure in the business that I'm trying to do this in. And the cleaning business, something I could definitely see, you know, like this is for me, this is it. Like I ain't, I don't really have no plans for nothing else. Like this is my, my one thing. Like I might buy some assets that'll cash flow on their own off based off of the money I bring in from this, but yeah. that ain't no focus. It's stuff that I can outsource that stuff too to make. Well, like I said, you, you this is all I'm worried about. You eventually want to sell uh, this business and, and you know, what in your thoughts would make your business a, an attractive buy for somebody who eventually wants to buy it someday? Like what specifically do you think would make it attractive? But for one, you got to think when you're looking at an am buyer, like think of yourself almost like what will make you want to buy something? For me, I'm going to know how much money is bringing in, but not only just the revenue, what's your expenses look like? What's the profit margins looking like? Things of that nature. And I mean, most people are going to look at it like, what did you do the last year? I mean, granted, if let's say you've been in business five, six years, they're going to want to see trending upward as far as growth goes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is why I plan on expanding because I mean, Dallas it's a lot of competition out here. Don't get me wrong. You can still make your, make your mark. I know a lot of people out here making their mark. I'm one of those people. So, and I mean, this is just, I've only been doing this really four months because I'm honestly three because February was like a dub month because I didn't even, I wasn't even on any platforms yet. It was, I was working on getting on platforms when I started. So I had like one book in that month. But we talking about every, even when I lost my cleaners for those three weeks, every month I've consistently gotten better. And so that just, and, and don't get me wrong, like it took a lot of trial and error. Like I had to figure out just last month, okay, this ain't working with Yelp. While it may be working with a whole bunch of other people, it's not working for me. And that's all that matters. What's working for your business? Like you can't, like a lot of people have to look at what other people are doing, but just cause it works this way for them don't mean it's gonna work that way for you. And where I found my bread and butter at was Google local services. So I took all my money off Yelp a lot of that over to local services. And that's when I started seeing the uptick in business. Yeah. So it's like, that's what I would want to see. I want to see a trend upward for growth, right? For revenue. Because at the end of the day, you have to constantly be getting better or somebody's going to come that's working on the same thing you're working on. They're going to be constantly getting better. They're going to outplay, they're going to outpace you. And now they're going to be on that person's radar. So when it's terms of like selling a business, to me it's, okay, what does your, you know, your market look like? Do you have a team that can handle this? Like how, yeah. You know, how hands on do you have to be? Because at the end of the day, like right now, my business is not sellable. Like I, I got to do everything. I'm right. still working on SOPs. Like, do you have any SOPs? Like we talk about, you know, operating procedures, right? And making, this makes the business standardized to where it can run without you. Yeah. Right? And I don't get me wrong. My, this is a very simple business. Like it's not hard to teach somebody else how to do it, but you still have to have the framework. So if I say, hey, uh, Roy, you can come work this real quick. Here and I need to have something that you can go off of to know what's going on and how to do certain things. Like how do we handle interviews? How do we handle bookings? How do we handle the marketing aspect? Like just different things like that. How customer service? How do I handle an angry customer? How do I handle like discounts? And just anything. And it's crazy because 
I mean, I'm an operations person. So a lot of people think it's like a set framework for this, but it's really any possible thing that you think could happen in a business. You need to have something that's in like documented that'll explain how to handle it. Because now it makes it easy for anybody to come in and do it. It's almost like when you look at Chick-fil-A, like no matter where you go, you can get the same type of service for Chick-fil-A. Yeah, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the, you know, my pleasure, all that, you know, great customer service. And they do things a certain way and it's standardized. And that's everywhere you go. You're yep. never going to go to a Chick-fil-A and get any type of different experience. I've never done it. I've been in multiple states. So that to me is what I want my business to replicate. I want it to be the cleaning business version of that to where no matter what, you're going to get the same type of service everywhere you go. I mean, while that may not be the, it's tougher because I have contractors, but it's also having contractors gives you a little bit of leeway because now I don't have to waste time on training. I don't have to waste time. Like I still get my, I still have a cleaning checklist for my cleaners. Like they still have a checklist, but they all know how to do the job because they've been doing it. Most of, most of my cleaners, actually all of them, at least two years of cleaning experience. It's usually what I require, but I make exceptions for some people, but honestly, it doesn't work out the best for them. But anyways, yeah, like they need something to go off of. And so now you don't have to worry about training. So things like that, that's just one less expense you don't have to worry about. And it's almost, you could almost consider me like, we're almost, the way we do it, we're almost like the Uber of cleaning businesses. Mm-hmm. Like you, we're just the middleman. And, and it goes back to just, it's money and being a middleman because we understand what it takes as far as marketing. So how about have my marketing breakdown, right? Things like that. So you understand like, that's what a lot of people don't get. Like a lot of these little smaller places sell proprietorships. They do on everything, but they don't know how to get the clients. Yeah, We understand what it takes to get them. And a lot of people don't realize the cost behind that. So like a lot of people don't, they're not computer savvy. They don't want to spend that money. Yeah. So they're just struggling dealing with the little they got. So yeah, they're happy to come work with you because you're going to waste that money on it. But at the end of the day, I'm making money to do nothing. I don't have to go waste time cleaning. Like you, you're not got to touch nothing. That's, that's the, the, me, beauty you know, of, the beauty of technology nowadays uh, since it's yep. evolved, like I said, the, the Uberization of certain service uh, economies um, using Man, technology. I'm trying to outsource. Yeah, I'm trying to compete with Thumbtack and Angelis, all of them. Like that's where my end goal is to, to not just be a cleaning business, but to be like a whole marketing ma- haven for service-based businesses, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, like I'm not going to be dealing with other industries. Like for me, my focus is cleaning, but I want to be able to have it set up to where it's a one-stop shop for any type of service-based business out here to where if you want to go be the middleman and build a team out for somebody, okay, well, you can come on our platform and that will be a subscription-based platform where you might pay me $197 a month. And now we get you set up with, you know, a booking platform. We get some, we have somebody in-house that will set your website up for you, you know, whatever you want. And then uh, at the end of the day, like the SEO will be on you, but we'll get you set up immediately. You know, I kind of want it to be like a business in a box type situation at the end. But also we're servicing like, hey, we have a whole platform for you to work off of. Yeah. And, now, and from there, you know, it's endless possibilities because now I could branch into getting like a, pro, uh, like, you know, processing payments and stuff like that. I could eat off of that. So that's another realm of money yeah. that you can make off of that. Now you're getting not only the cleaning revenue, but you get in you know, recurring revenue, not just on the cleaning aspect, but a subscription-based aspect yep. from just other owners. There was a, on top okay, of that. remember that? I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, and on top of that, you know, if you get like a Stripe type, your own like yeah. payment processing system, now you can yep. eat off every transaction. Yep. So there's multiple ways to see a recurring profit. And that type of stuff to me is what makes you more appealing to, you know, an end buyer. Because now you're telling me I could pay you this much to buy this business, but this business don't just have one way to make money. Yeah. It's turned into a whole platform. There's a, there's a, there's a, it's an entirely vertically integrated uh, system yep. uh, for everything that touches everything. That reminds me of something. I don't know if you remember, the, you know, the guy on TikTok that walks up to people with nice cars and he's like, Hey, what do you do for a living? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen him. There was this, there was this one dude, I'll never forget him. He was like, um, he asked me, what do you do for a living? He was like, you know, um, he was like, you never heard of the software, but I created the software, the payment processing system for hospitals so that whenever they do a transaction, some form, any form of transaction, I get like a couple of pennies off of it. And every single hospital system in America uses that. And I was like, oh, I'm telling you, that is and crazy. 
if people don't think about like it's just little things like that. Like you talking about my platform I use now, I think it takes like under a percent of every transaction, plus like an extra quarter or something. Yeah. But imagine you got a hundred clients that's using your platform. Yeah. It don't have to be nothing crazy. You're making money just off of them being successful. Yeah. So and not only are you making money off of them being successful. Yeah, you'll get every piece of every transaction. But on top of that, they're also using your platform. So you're hitting them twice. Yeah. And it's not like you're, when I say hitting them twice, I mean, yeah, you're eating off of them twice, but it's not like you're getting over it. Like you're providing yeah. the service at the end of the day. So don't yeah. think of it like that, but like for anybody listening. But at the end of the day, I've made money off of somebody twice, but I still have the cleaning aspect, right? Yeah. So it's like divisions now. So we got payment processing. Yep. We got the, you know, marketing aspect. Yep. We got the, you know, just um the booking platform things yeah. like that and now you're utilizing me instead of using a lot of large 27s maybe you're on thumbtack like wherever you at doing this i'm trying to make it to where i'm an integration of all those into one place i mean that's going that's a, a long-term thing like i don't care about somebody because it, it don't matter like you ain't gonna be able to like you ain't gonna have ideas i have off of them. yeah like, i got a lot of things i want to do off of it, and everybody's gonna do their own thing differently yeah but at the end of the day there's hundreds of thousands, millions of different service-based businesses out here. So you can't, you know, you're going to get your little cut. I'm just trying to get a piece of that. I yeah. don't need to be, I don't need to have the whole thing. I just need a piece. Because if you get a little fraction of that, you're talking about a seven, eight figure business. Mm -hmm. yeah. And at the end of the day, that's all I'm trying to get to. Because a, a, a fraction of every transaction. That's the goal. And I mean, people, you know, they'll look at you crazy when you're getting started doing this. Like people thought I was crazy when I first heard this. Like, why are you doing, like, even with Turo, they're like, why are you doing that? Why are you letting somebody use your car? Okay, why are you sending these people out here to clean hot? Like, okay, I'm sending them out here. I background check everybody, so I know they good. Like, it ain't like it's just anybody going there. I don't people background check. Most of my contractors have their own business on building insurance. And if yeah. they don't, I got mine. So I'm well protected. Yeah. I ain't got to worry about none of that. So, I mean, again, if you, this is a business to me. Like what we both do, you don't need a lot of time to be able to be successful at it. Yeah. Like this could be a, a side hustle or it could be your main thing. For me, I've turned it into my main thing. And I mean, I don't take no money out. I still got my non, I still got a I got a day job or whatever. I ain't, that's I the beauty. Nine. That's the beauty of it, man. But, nine to five, or in my case, I have a, a five to five. Cause <laughs> man, but, uh, uh them days. yeah, nine to five um plus your side business and then eventually plus um you know assets that kind of yeah. pay a monthly payment or a quarterly payment like a dividend or something like that uh that right there man that's the key and then you know even if you want to get into having you know life insurance uh set aside too so that you know when you're talking generational wealth then yep. you know you got more you're hitting on multiple aspects you know what i'm saying eventually you sell the business one day for three million four or five six million dollars and then they, you buy a mobile home park or something or you buy a bunch of exactly where you ain't even got to do nothing in that now. yeah yeah and, exactly. And i mean that to me like people say why well, you want to sell it after you get it like because i don't want to be doing this for the rest of my life people don't think about exit I strategy enjoy life i talk I and on top to of this what we do like, i'm sorry to cut you off but what you we good. do can be done anywhere in the world like bro i i could be in houston tomorrow and i can still run the business i could yeah. be in egypt Two weeks from now, I still can run the business. I could be anywhere in the world and still be able to run this business. I don't need nothing but this. Yep. That's it. All I need is a phone. If I got a phone and I got some internet service, I'm good. I don't even need a laptop to do what I do. Yep. All I need is my phone yep. and an internet and a signal. Just be able to get on the internet. If I got internet access, I can run this business. Wi-Fi money. It's going to be tough for on a phone, but I can make it work. I've your done phone, it. Your phone might be hot. Back. Your phone going to get you hot. You feel me? I <laughs> I just had to do it last, like two weeks ago when I had to go back to Houston. I didn't even bring my laptop. Yeah. I was doing everything on my phone. Yeah, I'm talking about taking booking calls, taking calls, doing bookings, everything right on my phone. Then I ended up getting like five bookings on the way back to Dallas while yeah. I was driving. Love it. Because why? I can answer the phone. I can stop, pull over real quick if I need to. Or if you're driving and you got it like that, hey, boom, just give me the email. Send that, send that a quote over. Hey, by the time I got home, I had like five bookings. Yep. We talk about on a four and a half hour drive. Just answer. That's what I like about it. Yeah. And 
I don't have to worry about overhead like that because all I'm paying for yep. is my booking platform, my website maintenance. Now that I'm at an SEO, SEO, but outside of that, those are necessities yep. for any business. Yep. I'm not outside of that. Only thing I worry about is marketing. Yep. I mean, yeah, you're gonna pay your cleaners, but they getting paid off of the jobs they do. Yeah. So as long as long as you're doing your job, you getting bookings. The book is paying for them. There's no, there's no, everything you else. don't have to take out no crazy loans. Like you don't have to. Man, you, know, you could get this started realistically with $1,500. Yeah. That's, that's just me saying, giving you kind of like a cushion. Yeah. To, you know, get started with some marketing, but you don't need that to get everything just in place. You don't need that. I mean, if you want to take a different route on marketing and maybe you want to go door to door, you got family members that's cool passing out or you might want to pay them a commission. You could do it that way. I mean, yeah. there's so many different routes you could take. Where's I choose to go with local services because that's where it's best for me. And like I say, it's almost like I call it a marketing that we did, that we got on this platform like a, a faucet. Like I got I got throttle it down or I got to turn it up. Like yeah. no matter what, you're gonna make at least two times what you spend on there. At least yeah. I had to. Like, uh, I, I had to, th- th- yep. I had to adjust my marketing uh, strategy a little bit because I think when I was on your your podcast, I think the first time or the second time I think I had uh gotten the the bus stop bench ads in in my city um mm-hmm. which, was, which was really dope to see the ads however the R and I said that I was like this is a long-term thing but the ROI wasn't really hitting like that I was like all right I'm paying 375 a month for five of these um I don't know whether or not if somebody sees the ad and they call me or do they see it and they keep seeing it because they're on the bus over and over again. Well, and they Google it. Then they then they call me. So I had to, I was like, all right. Yeah. You know, I was like, okay. I did, I think I did it for like six, seven months. And I was well, like, what I do that might you may be able to implement. I don't know if you have like a, a online like booking form or anything like that for that you send to people. But what I do is like I have a section in there, like, how did you find us? And yeah. that was really what made me shut down yo. Like mm. everybody was coming from Google. Literally, everything was coming from Google. And I'm like, I think I was on Yelp for months and I probably got three bookers off of Yelp. Yelp, Meanwhile, I, look, man, like I heard, here's what I heard, man. Here's what I, here's what I heard. I don't know if it's like for a fact. Yelp apparently works really well in California for some reason. I, I don't know the algorithm. I have no idea why, but Yelp, like I don't ever be like, let me go Yelp this. Like, let me go look at this. My wife goes to Yelp to look at restaurants on a deeper level. Oh, well, that's what I do. I mean, I yeah. ain't gonna say it. It ain't no thing. I mean, yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, you know, I, yeah, most of most of my clients, um, my personal clients come from either Google because first off, I have, you know, my Google ads running. So when somebody, when I answer the phone, you hear that this is a Google ads call. You know what I mean? Like, all right, cool. I got that. And then I asked them, where'd you find me? Google. Okay. And then I, then sometimes an, an attorney or a judge will refer my services to them. That's it. That's basically it. Um, even there was another, I was, I was going through the Better Business Bureau and they were running Google display ads for me, um, which was cool. I did that for like six, seven months. And mm-hmm. just, I just couldn't, t- I literally could not determine the ROI um, because my, my business is very call-based. Your business, people may call you, but sometimes they might just book on your booking platform and they, you might not. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to focus on SEO because I'm trying to get to that point. Yeah. I don't even have to talk to these people at all. Most of my stuff, like I probably have maybe two people that just went on my website and book. Yeah. But most of the book is I get is some people that's called, I send them a, a quote, they yeah. go in there and book, which is fine by me. I, I'm not worried, but I know to take it to the next level, I, I wanted to have a, I want to be able to just, you know, wake up and have a booking. Yeah. I've had that happen now yeah. a couple of times and it's a dope feeling. Like you ain't never talked to them or nothing. Never talked to them. Yep. And my industry, nah, they, they want to talk. They, they want to talk because- oh uh, yeah. It's a it's a very special sensitive uh, uh, situation that they're in, and they want to talk. Oh, to yeah, so like I I you know I was having the the Better Business Bureau. They were putting these display banner ads on the sides of these websites. It was like get a paternity test, and people would I would here's the thing: it would get like twenty five thousand impressions, and then like a hundred and forty clicks, which is like point zero zero four yeah. something like that. And I'm like. That's not a good click through ratio. And then from that 143, I couldn't tell if did they click and then did they call me? Because I couldn't really tell specifically from that. And I was paying them 200 bucks a month for that. All right, got it. 200 bucks a month for I was like, man, I'll just redirect that all to what's working right now. Well, that exactly. See, and that's what I was doing, right? I was spending like at least like 
five to eight, like, cause y'all really get you, bro. They like yeah. to get your logo and everything to pop up. You got to yeah. pay money monthly. So you pay like $150 a month just for these standard settings that that's, you really need to make your business look like it's an actual business. Like you talk about a logo showing up, like little stuff. That's not even a marketing. That's just to like show your business on yeah, this yeah. platform and look like you're legit, which is ter- like, I ain't gonna say it's terrible, but it's, it's a nice little way to eat. Right. Yeah. This is what you said eating off you multiple ways. Now you got to pay for the marketing. Yeah. And what I found out is it's a lot of spam on Yelp. Mm. Like I remember my very first book and I thought I had was spam. They almost scammed me, bro. They uh-huh. tried to send me this little cashier's check and I found and I only found out that I was a scam off being in that community. And I, mm. and I mean, we can hit on that community as well because that community definitely. Uh, yeah, saved let's, the let's, day talk, for me. let's, let's it, talk about that. So is, is the you said the community you can pay for on the side or something. Yeah, it's like 30, it's nothing crazy, like $30 a month, man. You talk about like, okay. maybe 37, 30, $37 a month. But it's worth it though, right? Maybe like a dollar change a day. To me, let me tell you how to save me. And that's crazy because I just got a call from one of my, from my cleaning business right now. I got the Insta text response though. So, I mean, I know they're interested in the cleaning. So I'll, I'll call them back after I get off this. That's fine. Yeah. And see little things like that to make it automated helps as well, people. Uh, but the community, right? It's a girl in here. I actually know her second month. She had 10K. She's out here. Uh, she's not in Dallas, but she's like on the outskirts of Dallas. Yeah. Which is perfect for her because there's not a lot of cleaner companies that you'll. Yeah, like, yeah. I had to kind of figure out what area I wanted to service. And at first, when I first started, I was getting calls way on the outskirts, but they don't really have a lot of options. So they almost are forced to use you because you can't find nobody that comes that far outside of Dallas. Yeah. So she's out on those outskirts. Her second month, she did 10K in revenue. Second month. And I was just, I was just getting on local service ads when she hit hers. And, and it's kind of like, I've been, uh, shout out to Shan. I've been kind of uh, collaborating with her on a whole bunch of different things. And I mean, it's no, like, we kind of started pretty much at the exact same time. I mean, while she may be outpacing my business, it don't matter to me. Cause let me tell you how she saved my business, man. She sent me, she sent me two cleaners uh, so far. Uh, one was doing great, but she had some health issues. So she had to stop. Uh, the other one is doing amazing. And um, you want to talk about somebody that saved my business. I lost, when I mentioned earlier, I lost all my cleaners. Yeah. She just so happened to hit me up like a, uh, like a few, like a week later. Or so she said she had somebody that may be interested in coming because they're in Dallas. And, you know, she's an outskirt, so she couldn't really do no jobs for her. And so that, that girl saved me and I ended up beating out my monthly revenue the month before just off of her alone. That's dope. I mean, like I said, you don't need a whole bunch of cleaners. Like I got, I think I got four cleaners right now. Yeah, I got four cleaners right now because I just got rid of one. She just she quit on the job. And I mean, that's going to happen, people. You just got to. And that was a crazy day because that was the day I put on Twitter. I was praying that these kids go well. And that's what happened the next day. She literally got to the job and quit. And I had to scramble and find somebody. But we found somebody. Yeah. Um, and that was just a whole debacle. But if it wasn't for that community, I would have never known Shan. And she sent me that lady. Lady kept me afloat and actually was killing it for me. Um, and shout out to her as well. I'm not going to say her name. You know, that's her business. I don't want to yeah. keep her private. But yeah. Yeah. shout out to her because she kept us afloat for a good while. And then I started branching over into Facebook uh, for my, uh, for hiring. And I found somebody who didn't actually come work for me, but the lady she referred me to has got to be one of my best people. She has a whole company. Um, She does Airbnbs out here as well. And she does jobs on her own. So she has a company of her own, but she takes cleaning jobs herself as well. So I, she takes pretty much the bulk of my jobs because she's always available. She has real flexible availability. Um, but it's just little things like that. But Shan, like she sent me an SEO person actually last night. Uh, she sent me a guy she's using for her SEO. So it's just little things like that. It's kind of like In just being able to collaborate yeah. with people. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, man, that's, her. That's, what it's, that's what it's all about, man. That's, what, that's why people yeah. sometimes pay for these communities like that. But the, what I like about the Hearthstone is they, I, I don't get to be as active in there no more because I'm so busy with the IA stuff. Yeah. But uh, they're real active. They do weekly calls. They yeah. have guests coming there with their own cleaning businesses uh, often. So it's not like you just paying and you don't get no kind of support. Like you can go in there and ask questions. I mean, just if you go search through all the little posts that's been through there, you'll get a whole bunch of game just from those uh, like recent posts that's been put yeah. in there. People can give you reviews and stuff to help you out with that because you got to have some reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. You need to live up to those reviews. Yeah, maybe, yeah. But yeah. to get started, I mean, that's what everybody does. I mean, I don't yeah. care who they are. Um, little things like that. 
And I mean, just being able to interact with them, you know, and you talk about not just the heart logs, but you also got a whole plethora of people in their community as well yep. that you can just interact with that got their own business. They and they own, they may be in their own pro, uh, step in their business. Like they may just be getting started. Some may have been doing this two, three years. Some may have been branching from being sole proprietor to taking this over. So you could just get different perspectives from people. And that's kind of like, I kind of found, you know, a few people in there that rock with me and just after Shan was one that was out here close to Dallas. Like I say, save my business, man. Cause I was going through it when them three, when I, when I lost all my clients, yeah, yeah. I lost business. And this was like a three week stretch where I could, like, I just had to shut everything. I had to turn my marketing and all. Like I couldn't oh, do nothing. Oh man. So it was like, that was like, the say like that little thirty seven dollars a month or whatever it is that I, yeah. I don't even know how much it is I don't notice it but um just being able to have somebody that will throw you stuff like that and and now it's to a point last week she threw me a booking oh. that I actually just did uh, the the other day so you didn't make her money back you didn't make money back a hundred times over by now man just by knowing her yeah and not just one person. That, that just one person we don't talk about all the other people in the group yeah. so i mean I, I definitely recommend it uh if you want to go cop that course i mean i can send you my affiliate or wherever you want to put that in the thing yeah we can post that in the, um, in the, in the yeah so i mean but even if you don't use my link bro i'll say it like this it's worth the money you pay just to get that course because they're gonna walk you step by step by st from start to finish yeah you ain't i'm gonna put it like this i didn't have no questions after I took that course. Yeah. Like you don't find, I've taken, a, trust me people, I've taken a lot of courses and this may be the best one I've taken. Yeah. And, and that's just cause I didn't have no questions. Like I like taking courses where I, I don't have no questions to have. Like anything I could think of is covered as far yeah. as residential cleaning goes. That's all they focus on. So I wouldn't expect them to be telling me nothing about commercial. But I will say this, you may be able to hit somebody up in that community that may be doing commercial because they're not just focused on, everybody right. got their own thing, right? So the community as well, that's just another avenue, right? To be able to collaborate with people. And it's, like I say, it's inexpensive. You talk about maybe a dollar, dollar fifty a day. I mean, you spend that walking outside, you're going to spend a hundred. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you walk well. outside. So, you I mean, spend a hundred like right i walk out the crib i'm just like man i start cooking now because i mean yeah. it's crazy out here but i yeah. say it's definitely worth it uh that course gonna change everything i got going on man like i just i see you know i'm chasing this six-figure year uh, and even if i don't get it this year which i i think i can get it yeah uh, like because i'm about to start ramping up everything but even if i don't you talking about let's say your first year let's just say you was making you know you make 70k that's still 70k in revenue after yeah. you break that down profit margin is actually pretty good in this business yeah and you got to think even if they was trash i'm making money to do nothing I'm right money to answer yeah. a phone call and yeah. have a five minute conversation yeah so that's yeah. why i hate when people be online and on twitter and everything or instagram talking talking down on these on like us starting businesses and the first thing they want to ask is what's the profit margin yeah well i'm gonna put it like this i made my money back month like month two so i don't really care yeah. Like at this point, I made the course money back and I, 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 all my expenses, I made that back to like my first full month on the platform yeah. in March. And we're talking about now, you know, I'm looking to push, uh, I'm pushing 5K revenue. And this is like month, what, three? Yeah. Three, really, like the third full month for me because February wasn't really a full month for me. So yeah, March, April, May, yeah, month four. Month four. So I mean, yeah, it's pretty good. No, that's good. And I'm pushing 5K. And I mean, like I say, this is because I didn't have a grasp on how to market. Like, had I figured this out, had I not been so hesitant to make a move that I should have done, I should have did this two months ago, I'd probably be looking at pushing towards a 10K a month right now. Because yeah. I would have been a lot, I would have slowly been increasing. But me, I had to slowly increase. Some people cool, like you might be okay just dropping 5,000 a month on, you know, Google local service ad marketing or whatever platform you find that works for you. Yeah, me, I started off real slow. I started off with like 500 on Google uh, logo and 500 on Yelp. And I was on this platform called Bark, trying that out, Thumbtack. I was on a bunch of platforms. So like you're going, you, everywhere is different. You don't know what's going to hit. Yeah. And after a couple of months, I found out Google is where it's at. That's why Google For is me. a trillion dollar company. That's why. You feel me? Yeah. And I, and what I did was I, I depleted, I took everything off Yelp. Yeah. I took that money actually this month over to Google and now I'm about to hit my first 5K month. 
Yeah. So, I mean, that just goes to show you just going to have to, it's going to be a little, like, like you mentioned, you did the, you did a couple different types of uh, marketing techniques. Yeah. Everything ain't going to work. Yeah. I mean, in a perfect world, it all works, but. You got to try it though. You have to, you have to at least but try. I'll, yep. And, and, and I'll say right now, I'll say right now what I spend on my ads, I'm going to make at least double that at least. Yeah. Yeah. Like for what yeah. I spend on Google a week, all I need is for what I spend in a month, all I need is like two bookings, two yeah, or three yeah, bookings. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I'm good. I, it's covered, it's paid for itself. So yeah. yeah. That's why I tell people it's worth it for you to try it out. I yeah. think if you if just remember business ain't for everybody, and that's cool, but it's a lot of things you could do. Like this don't take no, you ain't gotta be no business savvy person to do this, this this industry. Like to me, to have your own cleaning business, like I got. You ain't got to be business savvy. You can have absolutely no knowledge of business. And after you take that course, you'll be a, a freaking genius. And you'll, you'll know everything going on. And then again, it's just trial and error at that point. And that's any business that you do, it's going to be trial and error. And I can tell you that working for, I work for two, three, four to 500 companies. That's all that they do. It's just on a bigger scale. And that's yeah. only because they got more money to throw at stuff. Yeah. Because they usually publicly trade and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a plethora of options for y'all here. Yeah. And exactly. it's crazy because during this call, I done got two calls. There you go. Clean the business. I had a call before this and, and I'm probably, and she was looking to set up recurring services. There you go. So at the end of the day, if you don't get nothing from this, when you do start y'all's business, whatever business it is, it could be DNA, it could be cleaning, it could be whatever. If it's something where people are contacting you and calling you, pick up the phone. Yeah. <laughs> And if you don't pick up the phone, at least call back. Yeah. Because back. Yeah. what I found out is most time when I pick up the phone, like people that call you, they're going to, whoever the first person to answer is who they're going to go with. Yep. Yep. Me, I have it set up to where my, my phone service I use does an instant text message back to them. And usually they respond because they call them on a cell phone. So they'll usually text back and say, it'll basically just ask if they're looking for cleaning services. Most time they say yes. I call them back. I usually can secure that booking. Yeah. Usually got like a 10, 15 minute window. To call these people yep, back. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. And it's just like I say, you're gonna learn all this off trial and error. Yep. And if you really wanna, if you wanna spend a little bit more money, you don't care about the expenses to start off, hire you a VA. Yep. We'll find you a nice, cheap, inexpensive VA. Ain't gotta be no OG $25 hour VA. It could be somebody simple from overseas. Yep. You can hire them just to answer calls. And now you ain't gotta worry about missing none. Yep. And you could track that. Yep. And on Google Local Services, if you answer the first call, it's recorded. So now you can go back and listen in on the call and see how they handled the call. Yep. And maybe you could understand why this person did or didn't book. And that could also help with SOPs. SOPs help with your operations. Now you're running more efficiently. Now you're maximizing your, your uh, expenses, right, for anything that you do. So, I mean, there's just so many ways you could take it, man. I ain't trying to go on no ramble or nothing like that. But at the end of the day... Well, yeah, my business, I've heard reviews about yours. I haven't taken your course, but I've heard, you know, good things about it. And I think you got some students that's out there pushing five figures if they haven't already hit it. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's a no brainer, man. At the end of the day, don't need much time. During a week, I probably spend maybe four or five hours. And that's because I, I tweak a lot of little stuff here and there. And I'm trying to get SOPs in place. If I wasn't doing that, you talk about maybe four hours a week. You're going to spend yeah. on this. The actual, yeah, the actual work that I like, the actual operation of the bit of my business is maybe like an hour and a half a week. And, and don't even get to a point where you can outsource. Yeah. Now you spend yeah. in literally an hour maybe right. on the business for real. Right. And that's only because you want to, you want to get to a point to where you're not working in the business, you're working on it so right. that you can scale. I spend more time, time working on, on my business. Yep. Then I do, and that's what that's what I say. Like all the stuff, like out of the four hours, it's me mainly trying to get started, situated, getting a, a CRM system together. Yeah. yeah, and then you know, once I get off this deployment for, for uh, IA, I'm gonna get into um, you know SOPs real heavy, so that I can you know when I do need to hire somebody, I'm prepared. I don't have to spend time doing it; it'll already be done. Yeah, and but far as like answering calls, man, yeah, it's about an hour a week. Yeah, that's it. And I'm probably gonna get like twenty calls or so. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Uh, you gave, you gave a lot of information in this one, man. And like I said, your, your, your business is still in its infancy, uh, but you, you definitely have plans to, to grow it. Best of luck to you 
as you go. And I, I like to see the journey, man. I love, I love how you talk about the ups and the downs. Shit ain't always perfect, man. As you do this, hey, and that man, and I and I, y'all can follow me on Twitter. I post all that. Like yeah, I don't just post the good. Yeah, y'all are hear me talk about like, dang, I had a cleaner day. This month, I recently Dirty. just had a clean. This man had a pig in the house, yeah. a pig and a dog. <laughs> and I had to because he wasn't yeah. willing to pay the the extra amount that was owed. I had to cancel it on the spot. I mean, you deal with stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I was, you know, I, I'm a good guy. I pay my cleanest gas money for that, but you ain't got to do that. The good, the bad, and the dirty. You know what I'm saying? That could be a dope. Well, I know you don't, you're not. Hey, gonna, man. You're holding off on your podcast at the moment, but that could be a little sub series of you documenting your your uh, your stuff, the good, the bad, and the dirty of the. Yeah, community. I'll probably bring the, po- I'll probably bring the <laughs> podcast back in about another month or so. I'm trying yeah, to yeah, I know. I know you do. Some guests lined up. So we'll yeah, yeah, right now, sure. it's crazy. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, nah, so where, where can thank the, you, bro. Yeah, where can the people find in. you, man? Uh, yeah, so I'm I kind of branched off of Instagram altogether at this point. Uh, mainly I'm on Twitter at Wealth Culture Culture with a K, so W E A L T H K U L T U R E. Um, on Twitter, that's where I'm most active. That's where you're gonna get all the all the insight on everything I do from IA to clean a business podcast and anything you could think of that i'm in I, i've done or been in i comment i'm pretty transparent people you can hit me up dm me i'll respond to all of them as they come in i mean i've been getting a lot more lately because i get a lot of eye questions but yeah. i'm still new in that but um instagram you can find me at, at well for the culture culture with a k uh, you want to check out my podcast man i got that too just well for the culture culture with a k um on i'm on every platform on spotify just think, of Cardi, just think of Cardi B and Offset son when you think of culture. In the, in the, in the, in the, oh, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. Is it? I think that's how they spell it with a K. I oh, I didn't even know they had another kid. Man. <laughs> but I think that was the first kid. The first kid. Oh, it wasn't? The second kid is like Wave or Icy or whatever the hell. Oh, okay. Gosh. Gotcha. But yeah, I mean, tap in. I mean, if you shoot me a DM on Instagram, I'll still check on that period. I just don't post that much no more because... I'm a one man show, so it's yeah. tough to be getting stuff. Like I need to start outsourcing. I probably am come next year. I'm probably gonna have it all set up. Nice. I gotta talk with a couple people. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate you, man, for just bringing me on, allowing me to you know interact with your audience. It's kind of dope right here, man. I ain't never you know I'm so used to being on my platform, actually being able to come on somebody else's and actually have some stuff to give out to you know get some game out of people is, is a great experience, man. I appreciate you for having me on. Yeah, man, no problem, bro. And um, thank you. I'll post all your stuff in the in the in the, in the show notes here. Um, so, so yeah, everybody, thank you for, for tuning in to this to this episode of uh, Skills Making Meals. Uh, if you like this video, you know, like and subscribe, uh, share it. You know, there there might be somebody that you might know who ex- ex- expressed interest in starting their own cleaning business or other type of service business. And a lot of the stuff that Ali and I talked about is applicable to other service businesses. Um, so definitely share it, like, subscribe. Hey, look, if you are interested in starting your own paternity testing business, you can go to paternityuniversity.com where my course basically walks you through the entire process of how to start and operate your paternity testing business. And it's the only course on the planet like that right now. Nothing else exists. And uh, I got the best one because <laughs> all five star reviews, right? Oh uh, yeah, all five star reviews. Yeah, hey, all five star reviews. like a winner to me. All five star reviews, and we got a we got a um, a very uh, intimate and growing community. I mean, where where people are are posting their wins, talking about the things they're learning, etc. So go to paternityuniversity.com and check that out. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. Ali, thank you for joining, man. I really appreciate it, bro. Appreciate you, my brother. Appreciate you. All right, all right. Peace. <laughs>